In this episode, we're talking about How to Have Sex, the award-winning new film directed by Molly Manning-Walker and starring Mia McKenna-Bruce, both of whom join me today. Here's Molly on the inspiration behind the film. I went on lots of these holidays as a teenager, Magaluf, Ibiza, Ayanapa, and I started to realise that that had had a big impact on my idea of what sex was at that time and what consent was. What's your name? Tara. No one cares if you're a virgin, it's very chill. So why are you bringing it up then? Hi, we're gonna play a game. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. I'm gonna get that gun of mine, and I'm gonna change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. Some people call me a freak. I hate that word. I don't believe in it. Better yet, I don't believe in labels. You know, I think you're the only girl in the world that can stand on a stage with a spotlight in her eye and still see a diamond inside a man's pocket. Because I'm up at five every morning working my ass off. Does someone want to just tell me to my face, you're never going to give me the scores I deserve? Hi, I'm Anna Smith and welcome to Girls on Film. Today I am thrilled to be discussing the new film How to Have Sex, which will be streaming exclusively on Mubi from December the 29th. Mia McKenna-Bruce plays Tara, who takes a girl's trip to Malia with her two best friends from school, Sky, played by Lara Peake, and M, played by Enva Lewis. In a flurry of neon mini dresses and fishbowl cocktails, the girls navigate the worlds of sex, consent and self-discovery. It's an entertaining watch and it's a thought-provoking one too that touches on a lot of things I'm excited to discuss with Mia and Molly today. Girls on Film listeners can actually watch this film for free. Stay tuned to find out how. How to Have Sex won the Ansard de Regal Prize at Cannes this year and Mia recently picked up the British Independent Film Award for Best Lead Performance. I am pleased to welcome her today along with the film's writer-director Molly Manning-Walker. Molly and Mia. Welcome to Girls on Film. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's brilliant to have you both here. Um, and Mia, congratulations on your Biffa win. That's fantastic and so deserved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, I, I love this film. It really is phenomenal. Molly, for those people listening that haven't had a chance to see it yet, can you tell me how you describe it to people who ask? Yeah, it's about um, three girls who go on a clubbing holiday um, and one of them, Tara the lead, who Mia plays, um, is kind of desperate to lose her virginity and feels the pressure from society and from friends and uh, through toxic masculinity and it kind of all goes horribly wrong and looks at consent and the grey area or not so grey area of consent. Yo, sexy. No, you can hear me, I can see you smiling. You look going out there. Should come round here for please. Yeah, I can ask the girls. Fucking hell. Talk about selective hearing. <laughs> What's your name? Tara. It's a nice name, isn't it? And what an incredible debut from you, Molly. And you, of course, wrote this as well. Can you talk me through where it all started? Yeah, so I went on lots of these holidays as a teenager, Magaluf, Ibiza, Ayanapa. And I guess it was on reflection of uh, with some friends that I went on those holidays that we'd experienced some quite strange things. For example, the blowjob on stage we had witnessed. And I started to realise that that had had a big impact on my idea of what sex was at that time and what consent was. And sort of the idea of like quick have sex as much as possible. You have to like talk about it and be really confident in it when kind of no one really knew that what they were doing. It's, it's in a world of holidays where there seems to be an expectation, as you say, of sex. And can you just elaborate a little bit on when you say the blowjob on stage scene? Because that is quite... Um perhaps a shocking moment for people that haven't been on that kind of holiday. When we went on one of these holidays, there was a, a bar crawl and uh, they were all kind of like sexualized games where you we were like passing shots between our mouths and they slowly escalated through the night. So as people got more drunk, they got more extreme. And then like the finale of this bar crawl, I, we were like standing on a pool table and it was like, can I get two guys up here? And they didn't know what they were, was going to happen to them. And they were like, first guy to get hard wind. And um, that's the scene now that's in the film. And, and, I, and I guess it's kind of what started me writing the film because it's a crazy idea that you would do that 
and put pressure on young men as well in that way. Yeah, because it's a consent issue on all sides, that, isn't it? That putting people in that position. Mia, what attracted you to this project and how did you first meet Molly? Well, I first met Molly after I did my first tape um, for the film. Part of the tape was we had to do a TikTok as well, which I'm not very well versed in TikTok, let's say. So I had to use like my little sister and was like, <laughs> teach me how to use TikTok, basically. And then I sent off this TikTok and I didn't expect to hear anything back because it wasn't the greatest TikTok. Talk, but I did get my dog in it, so I think that probably sold Molly. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely the dog and not you. Yeah, always the dog, always the dog. When in doubt, put your dog in. <laughs> I mean, there was loads of things that drew, drew me to it, but when I was reading it, it felt very much like... Almost like I was having a conversation with, like, the writer, like, Molly, instead of kind of sat reading dialogue or anything like that. It felt so natural and flowing, which was amazing. But also, I've got a 16-year-old sister, and I was like, I want her to watch this film. And what's the way to make her watch it? <laughs> Try and be in it. She really has to then, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and she <laughs> has, which is amazing. What did she think of it? Absolutely loved it. And like, hasn't stopped speaking about it since. All my family, um, which again is crazy because obviously they're all different ages. Like my mom, my dad, I've got two younger sisters. One's 21, one's 16. So to hear them all talk about it is incredible. Well, it is a real conversation starter. On the one hand, that's fantastic. But on the other hand, it's quite shocking really that these conversations aren't happening even with the young younger generation because I've heard this from some younger viewers or people in their 20s saying I wish I'd seen this when I was a teenager. Molly what kinds of research and workshopping and preparation did you do with young people to try to find that truth and to find really you know what are the urgent issues that we need to communicate about more? During the development process one of the financiers was actually like you know the conversations moved on so much after Me Too we've become much more aware of it there's programs like I May Destroy You and Uh, sex education and hopefully that's really changed it for young kids so they were like we want you to go out and talk to young people and research what what is what is the conversation that's happening now and so we went into major cities around the UK and we did we ran these workshops with girls and boys separately and we gave them bits of the script particularly the two the beach scene and the later assault in the beach scene for people who haven't seen it she says yes but it's very clearly she doesn't want to have sex with him and lots of teenagers were standing up and saying, it says here that she's very uncomfortable, but that doesn't matter because she said yes. And we felt that there was like such an unhuman response to what sex is. It had become very like almost legal, you know, like people were talking about it in such factual terms, but without saying like, is the other person having a good time? Are we both enjoying ourselves? Is she, does she feel pleasure in this situation? No one ever talked about that. And I think we realised there was sort of a big hole in, in that sort of love for each other. And Mia, when you were performing these scenes, did you have an intimacy coordinator? Yeah, we had um, an intimacy coordinator with us from uh, when we did rehearsals back in London before we went to Malia which is obviously amazing because then we got a good relationship with her as well. And I don't think I've really worked with one before. So it was amazing having that like extra, extra safety and security and someone to talk to. In terms of the male actors as well, I mean, what kind of conversations, Molly, were you having with them? Because I've, I've read a few interviews with your male stars who seem to have engaged really intelligently with this subject. I find it very emotional and moving when the, when the guys speak about it, because I think... Um, you know, it's something that we all know and it's something that because it's written from the female perspective, we have all experienced that so we all understood it. Whereas for them, they had to jump into the other perspective for the first time and they were starting to realise the other side of it and understand the way that we've learned to have sex wrong and how that, how huge that is. Watching that was very moving. And Mia, your performance is beautiful and heartbreaking. I think that there's some points towards the end where I just felt so much for her and thanks of course also to Molly's beautiful writing and direction but when her friends aren't picking up on the signals as well so it's about female friendship can you talk to me a bit about that and working with your female co-stars in terms of you know your character wants to reach out and share something but perhaps there isn't the structure for that yeah I think it's you know it's something that everyone can relate to on some sort of level this kind of not having the words to say something, like to say what you really want to say, particularly at that age. And it's something, again, we got to work on quite a lot in rehearsals in kind of saying the unspoken, you know, not not doing it all um, through through the dialogue. Like, we, Tara obviously doesn't say 
what she's feeling. We have to feel it with her. Um, so we worked on that quite a lot. And, you know, it was it's it's difficult because we're all super, super close in real life. So it is, it is hard, like, having those moments, you know, particularly with Skye, where she gets in the bed and she says, like, best holiday ever. Like, it's it's hard, but, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's real. That's the thing. Because when you say that that scene, there's a there's a terrible sort of irony there, isn't there? Because she's not picking up mm. the fact that your character really thinks quite the opposite in some ways. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I've seen you guys on the dance floor together. You obviously really get on well. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> such a crew at like every ceremony, every party. It's like you know when the how to have sex guys are in town. <laughs> it's brilliant. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> how would you describe Molly's style as a director that helps to create that wonderful sense of unity? Obviously, she's just incredible. Um, I've spoke about quite a lot how Molly having the faith in us gave us this confidence and like ability to kind of get really vulnerable and, and throw ourselves into it like a hundred percent and also providing such a safe and happy set we were all genuinely like you say like wherever we go we go all together and we go like all in we're such a unit like cast and crew football was on a sunday um we had like music nights poker nights stuff like that that meant you know we were all there as a genuine family as cliche as that sounds <laughs> <laughs> and molly how would you describe your style i mean i know you've obviously been a cinematographer but in terms of directing your actors like a big thing for me was like building their world up and making it free as 360 as possible so like giving them the information of backstories and making sure that the set was 360. And so everyone had the information to sort of pull from and w wasn't questioning where things came from in terms of like how they were feeling. But also because they're such excellent actors, it meant that we could play, you know? So we had, often their first takes were amazing. And then we had the chance to be like, what would it be like if she was really pissed off in this scene? And why would she be pissed off in this scene? Or let's do this scene without dialogue. Um, and just f and feel it through her like their faces and doing that not only really questioned everything and then when it's when it feels wrong you know you're like oh that feels wrong let's go back to doing it like this but when it felt right it's like wow you can just like continue to open this stuff up and I guess I just felt really lucky because lots of sets are really stressful and I felt like I had the opportunity to play and be free to pivot and move and when something wasn't working turn it on its head. It kept everyone excited about what we were making, the cast and crew, you know, and we were always feeling it out together as a, as a family. And I've obviously heard some amazing reactions from this. You know, I was there with the Cannes audience. They absolutely loved it. I've seen all the awards love and I'm sure there's lots more awards stuff to come. And I watched this with my husband as well for a second time and he loved it. So I'd love to know what are your highlights from the kind of reactions you've been having from all kinds of different people about this film? Mia, do you want to go first? I mean, wow. Um... The reaction has just been insane and obviously bittersweet as well because it's amazing to know that we're making something that is getting conversations going but it is that reminder that that conversation needs to be had so you know there's there's that that comes with it as well but for me still the immediate reaction after people saw it for the first time in Cannes I'll never get over that feeling it was just the most out of body experience seeing everyone stood up like celebrating what we had done just added to the magic that, that this job already was. Especially because we finished the film on the Friday and took the film to Cannes on the Tuesday. So, like, there wasn't really a breathing space in between. And, you know, a week before we were questioning, is it any good? Like, have we made something that that will resonate with anyone? So that will always be a real m moment that I'll, I'll remember, that we'll all remember for sure. And as Mia said, it's, you know, it is really bittersweet, the reaction, because hundreds and hundreds of women writing with their story and f saying that they feel seen and thank you for making this film and sorry that you had to. But the, the couple of reactions that have really stayed with me, one dad said to me, thank you, I'm a single dad and I don't want to bring up my son to follow the norms that we have taught our kids. And I don't know how to have a conversation with my son because it's so difficult. So thank you for allowing me to talk 
to give me myself the language to talk to him. And then another guy, a friend of a friend, wrote to me saying, I've realised what I've done in the past. I'm taking myself to therapy. I'm changing my ways. And I actually think, the, you know, that male response is pretty, uh, is pretty huge for me. That's incredible. I'm tearing up just hearing that. Molly, I'm not surprised. It, it does have so much power and it's so important. Um, do you think that it could become a great tool for parents or educators in general to show them and talk about it, bring it up with a certain age in a classroom? So we went into school last Friday and, you know, it was a really rowdy school. It reminded me of my first high school, which was like really chaotic. And all the kids were like, no, miss, I don't want to take my jacket off. Like, wah, 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 I don't want to sit down. And they watched the film and the majority of kids felt very passionate that it was something wrong. And a bunch of kids saw nothing wrong in the entire film. And in a very calm and collected way, the kids who knew that it was wrong explained to the other kids why it was wrong. And that was like the most um, emotional moment that I've had of the entire process because these 16-year-old kids who were like really rowdy and like you know, were like, listen, you can't do this to a girl. Like, she's asleep, she's in her own bed. And, you know, the other kids were saying, but she should have left or she should have said no. It's like, it's not about her saying no, it's about you reading the room. And they were debating it and teaching each other how to act within people. And it just, like, it was so crazy for me. That sounds incredibly powerful. And I'm just, yeah, I'm so glad that you've been able to be with Girls on Film to celebrate this incredible film. What are you working on next, Molly, first? Oh, no. Just writing away, plugging away, trying to get the next thing. Yeah, next thing. I don't know what it is yet. Well, whatever it is, I hope you'll come back on Girls on Film and talk about it, please. Of course. We love that. Of course. And Mia, what are you up to? Are you allowed to reveal? I'm figuring out a few few things for uh, next year. So. Uh, hopefully exciting things that, um, yeah, I get to tell more important stories, hopefully. Do you feel strongly about telling stories from a female perspective like this one? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, like, once you've done a film as well, the kind of aftermath of talking about it, this has been amazing to get to talk about it. Um, you know, press runs can be quite long sometimes, but this is like, I just want to talk about it forever and ever and ever. And it's because it's something that matters so much to so many people. So if I can, if I can do more of that, I would love to. Well, that is great. And that's what we love doing on Girls on Film. And you've both been an absolute delight to have on. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll hopefully see you at, at the next awards ceremony, maybe the BAFTAs, maybe on the dance floor. <laughs> Always on the dance floor. Always on the dance floor. <laughs> I will see you there. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, guys. You're listening to Girls on Film. I'm Anna Smith and I was joined by actor Mia McKenna-Bruce and writer and director Molly Manning-Walker to talk about their film How to Have Sex, which will be streaming exclusively on Mubi from December the 29th, 2023. Girls on Film listeners can watch it with 30 days free at mubi.com forward slash girls on film. That's M-U-B-I dot com forward slash Girls on Film. Girls on Film is an HLA production, brought to you by executive producer Hedda Archbold, producer Charlotte Matheson, audio editor Jack Howard, and our partners for this episode, Mubi, a global streaming service and distributor where you can find a hand-picked selection of world cinema. Thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. We're excellent, yes. Like, really good. Save you guys the trouble. Actually, swim for the county. <laughs>